On Katia's Buzz today, I'm going to take you over the menu settings on your Canon EOS R3. There are tons of pages and you need to modify some of them in order for your camera to function to the best of its ability. So, I'm not gonna waste any time, let's just jump in. There's quite a lot to go through and I would really recommend that you follow this along with your camera on and that you make the changes. Now, all the changes I'm going to show you are gonna be good for you. They're good for me and most of them are pretty general. At least it'll give you a pretty good understanding of what those things mean because it's a little bit overwhelming when you ju just receive this camera, you don't really know what's what. So on your camera menu, which is the red settings, you're going to go to tab one, JPEG, EIF quality, I moved it to eight. Image size, you're going to raw, and the JPEG, you make it the large. And if you click on the buttons, you see that it changes the information on the top. You're able to follow L. It gives you the information you need to set it up properly. You want to take raw pictures because what happens is if you do JPEG or ping or anything else, you won't have all the information necessary to then mess with it in Lightroom or in any other software. If you use RAW, you have much more information on that picture. So really, if you're doing photography, that's really the best choice. So if you are doing events or things where you have a quick turnaround, what you should do is you do like me, you do half RAW and half JPEG. So you have both. But if you're doing landscaping or if you're really looking for quality photography, make sure you definitely, definitely want to shoot in RAW. All right, so now we're going to click tab two, tab three, tab four. When you go on tab four, you have the white balance. And I recommend you use the automatic white balance. Unless you're a top professional and you do photography for a living and you're really set in setting your white balance, if you're doing events, if you're moving around a lot or whatever, just set up automatic white balance. If you want to get a little bit specific and you want the, you know, you can do the settings so that it's, it knows it's interior, cloudy, sunny, but I usually don't even go there. Automatic white balance and that should do it. On tab four, you have the color space. On the color space, you want to change it to Adobe RGB. Instead of sRGB, you're going to use Adobe RGB, which is a better choice. Now on picture style, you just want to go neutral because neutral picture style provides a histogram that best shows the available dynamic range. Now press OK. We're going to go to lens aberration correction and turn all the options to off. I suggest that most photographers enable chromatic aberration correction. So you put that on so diffraction correction is off. The only thing that's on is chromatic aberration correction. So we're done with tab four. Now we're going to go to tab five and you're going to go to the high ISO speed NR off. Long exposure noise reduction, you go and disable that. Noise reduction is destructive to the image details. I prefer to add the noise reduction during post-processing. Now on the sixth tab, I don't touch anything. On the seventh tab, release the shutter without the card. So you make sure that's on off. On tab number eight, image review. Review the duration to four seconds. I think the default is two. So what it does is it allows you to review your image for four seconds instead of a very quick two seconds, which I prefer. The viewfinder review option is disabled by default and it's speeding the shooting process. Now you're going to go back and go to the ninth tab and the shooting information, display, Screen info settings, you want to enable number one, number two, number three, and number four. I also kept number five, and that's with all the information. Click here on the little side that says info, and from here, you only use basic info, on screen, button, and histogram. 
So if you click on each one and remove them, you see on your screen that it makes everything disappear. And you press OK, electronic level. And you know that you can go and modify all that here. And that's really up to you. It depends what you want to have on your screen. And that's really a personal decision. On tab 9, you want to go to shooting info display and grid display. And you want to put 3x3. Three three. So it's fairly simple, kind of help you. Now the others available are a little bit too intense. And I personally like to have those lines. They help me out with the composition. So if you like that, it's 3x3. Three three, I think is the best choice for this. Then once you're done, you go back. The Instagram display, you can do it in brightness or RGB. I like to do the RGB. And the display size, instead of large, but which take all your screen, you're going to use small. And that makes it a lot easier. Now we're going to go to the AF menu on tab one. Subject to detect. Select people, animals, vehicles, or none. Whatever makes sense for your current shoot scenario. Mm, tab two, tab three. I didn't change anything on those. Tab four, orientation linked. AF point. So you put it on separate AF points, point only. And it instructs the camera to individually save the selected AF points for vertical and horizontal orientation. Press OK. We are going to go to tab 5 and the MF peaking settings. I put them on on, level high, and color red. You have red, yellow, or blue. I like to have them on red. We go back by pressing menu and on tab 6. On tab 6, the very last one, RF lens MF focus ring sensitivity. You want it to link to rotation degree instead of varies with rotation speed. Press OK. Now we're going to the playback menu, which is in blue. And I'm going to take you right away to the third tab and magnification. You're going to bring it to 10x instead of 2 and maintain the position. Make it enabled instead of disabled. So it allows one button press during playback to zoom very closely into your image, but it maintains the position of that image when changing it. Now we're going to go to tab 5 and playback information display. You want to pick 1, 2 and 3 only. And you remove everything else. Change the view to Instagram RGB instead of brightness. OK. So now we're going to highlight alert, which is just below and you are going to enable that. So what that does is that overexposed pixels will blink during your image review and that will help you with your exposure. Now we're going to proceed to the network menu and that's the purple menu. We're going to start with tab one. In fact, there is only one tab in that menu. You first of all want to put airplane mode on. Turn it on when you're not using the camera with the Wi-Fi because it's going to save you a ton of battery. And so make sure that you have it on and just turn it off when you're linking your camera to your iPhone or to your network or anything you're doing to upload your things. Now on that networking menu is where you set up your camera to your network, to your iPhone, to your computer, to your uh, FTP, but we're not going to go over this in this video. We are going to move on and go to the tools menu. And you see the little tool and it's yellow. Go to the first tab and format card. When you format your card, you delete everything that's on it and it's like a brand new card. So unless you do like me and you remove all your files directly on your computer, 
you want to go there, swipe your cards clean so that they are ready to shoot again. And you have the two cards available, card one and card two. You click on it and then you press OK. See, it shows you format card, all data will be lost. And so you press OK and it formats your cards. And this is how you do that. Auto rotate. That means that on your computer, the images will be properly rotated when viewed, but they're always oriented to fill the LCD when they're viewed on the camera. So you put it on. Go to tab two. On tab two, you want to go to beep and disable. You don't really care to hear your camera beeping, so that's really much better when it's disabled. To the third tab, I put my screen brightness to four. That's really kind of important because I feel that when I film or when I take a picture, it looks a lot darker on the computer than it does on the camera. So I'm bringing it down to four. On tab four, eye control, you want to calibrate it and then you want to have it on. If you haven't done so, you should really take the time to calibrate your camera. What it does it is it follows your eye and from the eye it focuses the object that you are taking a picture of. So that's pretty incredible technology. Uh, you can easily turn it on and off on your camera from pressing a little button. So make sure you calibrate it, go through the explanation, it's very easy. Once you calibrate it, put it on and then very easily on the camera you'll be able to put it on and off. On the tools menu, we're going to go to tab five, copyright information. You can enter the information as you desire. So you can put your name, you put the copyright that you want, and you show how you want uh, to display the copyright info. Once you click on that, it shows exactly how that's attached to your pictures. All right, so this is really far from perfect. This camera has a lot to offer. We're all gonna have to use it differently. I just purchased mine. I'm just trying to find information here and there to set it up properly. I am not a super photography pro. I just use the camera a lot for events, for, I do photography all the time for social media and for things of that nature, and that's a beast. So if you follow the tutorial I just gave you, you should have a pretty good uh, setup of your camera and, and you know, as you go, you'll be able to modify it. I really hope that this was helpful. Don't forget to leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of your Canon EOS R3. And if I have missed any settings that you think are really important, I'd love to know what you have to say. Make sure you press like and subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you follow me on Katya's Buzz. Until the next time, have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.